Hello everyone! Today we're going to be exploring these beautiful zebra products. Join me for some fun swatching and unboxing. Okay, so you guys know I suffer from full set syndrome. <laughs> it's a, a phrase we use a lot around here to describe that need that you have to complete the set of products that you love or a collection that you're working on. And the thing that I love to collect are, or the things that I love to collect are art supplies. So I've had the Zebra Mild Liners for a long time. It's a set of highlighters that come in some beautiful and very unique colors. You know, I grew up having just your standard Sharpie highlighters, you know, bright fluorescent colors. And these are some really unique, fun colors and really fun to color with. So I'm gonna show you some of the things I've been doing with them. I've been coloring with them, getting some really neat effects with them. So I'm gonna share that with you. We're going to be coloring with them. But I knew that I didn't have the full set. Let me show you what I've been swatching and doing with these because I have needed to have the full set of these colors because they're so beautiful. So, Okay, just a second, Jennifer, before you get going showing off those beautiful zebra products, let me take a second to remind everyone that we have a giveaway going. We're giving away these pencils right here. It's part of the Black Widow pencil sets. So that's brand new Monarch pencils. 48 pencils in this set here and a case to hold the complete set. If you're collecting all 144 pencils in the Black Widow collection, you'll be able to put all of them in this really adorable case. So stay tuned to the end of the video where I will tell you how to enter for that giveaway. Okay, now back to Jennifer and the zebra pens and markers. So this is volume two, Swatch Bliss. Love this book because it has various sizes of swatching squares. So let me show you, for instance, here is a swatch page that has just 12 squares. Um, some of them have 24, 36, that kind of thing. So you can, um, if you have a set of just 24 color pencils and you want one page to lay them all out on, this book has that in it. Um, so for instance, I needed a page that I could put all 25 colors, so I flipped over to the 36. That was the best option because I think it goes 12, 24, then 36. So the 36 um, swatch page was perfect for me and I just blocked out the columns I didn't need. So I swatched out all the colors that I already have, the sets that I already have, and it was kind of a trick. Um, Zebra's website doesn't have it laid out really well as far as you know in the fluorescent set these are the colors that um, that you get in the warm set these are the colors that you get it's a little confusing so I had to work pretty hard to um, get this swatch chart put together um, logically because I've been buying and collecting the sets over quite a, a couple years now and you can buy them in sets of 10 and 15 and sets of 5 and, and it's really confusing and they have a full set now of all 25 that you can buy so if you want to get into this and, and you just don't want to collect the individual sets that's the best way to do it. You can also buy them open stock which is one at a time um, which is fantastic and I think for all of you, what I'm going to do is have Steve create a page for all of us that will be a free download that you can come and check out our website. So I've done all the work and then had Steve create a beautiful free swatch page with all this information on it for you that you can download and swatch all of your mild liners into it and you don't have to sort and figure all this out. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I knew I needed one set left, um, I, and I did some research, local stores, where could I buy them? I could get them on Amazon. There was lots of options. Uh, I decided that I needed to fulfill my full set syndrome sooner than later, so I decided to go to our local store. So I'm going to roll some footage right now. Uh, we snuck a camera in and took some video of me shopping to satisfy my full set syndrome. So here you go. Here's some fun footage. Okay, so we're here at Michael's and what I did is I took a picture of my swatch page and I've got it here on my phone so that I would remember what I need to fulfill my full set syndrome. 
And they've got a few things open stock here and they even have a sale going on, buy one, get one 50% off. And they also have um, some of the brush tip markers that I want to try. So I'm going to zoom in here on my swatch page and we're going to check two places. I know I need the bright set so we can look up there and see if they have the full set because I think that'll be cheaper, obviously. But if they don't have the set, then I'll go in and look for the individual pens and hope for that. So wish me luck. I'll let you know what I find. Let's see if this is it here. We gotta see if this is mild fuchsia. That's lavender. That's lavender. Okay, that's a, I think this is the set here. If this is summer green, then we've got the right set. Um, summer green, okay. So this is the set to complete my full set syndrome. Here they are. This is the set of pens that I bought while we were at Michael's. And I'm really happy that I have them. I haven't opened it yet. I haven't swatched them yet. Um, they're right here. So the way I've organized my pens, in case you're curious, is I have, you can see over here, I've got a little piece of swatchy tape, swatchy, washi tape. And what I've done is taken a small little um, cut of each of these rolls and put them onto each of these. So if it has an orange piece on the pen, I know it belongs in this set. And there's the, the red for the warm set, green for the cool, blue for the friendly, and now I'm going to be putting yellow washi tape on each of these pens so forever I will remember that these five pens belong in the bright set. So I'm going to be doing that and I'm going to be swatching them all into their um, uh, the squares that they belong in. So I'm going to hit fast forward so you don't have to sit here and watch me do that. And then I'll come back and let you know how I feel about the five new colors. So let's hit fast forward and I'll be right back. Here are the five new colors. I have to say, this may be one of my favorite sets yet. It's got the beautiful two purples, a blue violet and a reddish violet, and the blue green that I'm really digging, and this yellowish green that I love, and this really pretty, they call it marigold, but it's sort of a watermelon type color. Let me bring it up a little bit closer so you can see the five colors that come in the bright set really love it really love that I went to the trouble of completing my full set so let me show you what a mild liner is maybe you aren't familiar with what these pens are they're by the company zebra um, they say mild liner I used to think they were mid liner in fact on Amazon sometimes it's um, typed mid liner and I think I'm not the only one that makes the mistake and calls it a mid liner so I think they on purpose do a typo and call it mid liner sometimes for those of us that do that um, they call it mild ink so all the colors are call called like mild fuchsia or mild dark gray they all start with the word mild now the bodies themselves have sort of changed over the years. This one's got almost all English. I think it's all English on here. And it does have an addition here where it says made in Mexico. I don't think maybe you can see that. So I think that's the change that has happened. Let me show you one of the original that I purchased ages ago and you can see there's tons of Japanese all over it. So I don't know if this one was originally made just in Japan. It says Japan on it. I see nothing about Mexico on it. So um, I think that um, maybe there's been some manufacturing switching here. So now we get almost well all English on this one here. There's a little bit of a different language here too. So I like that there's more English here. The other thing that they've improved is the color name now is on here it says lavender where before the only way we could come up with a name for these as far as name indication was right here there's some English letters and it was MR on here so we knew that was 
MR for mild red. So that one is, let's see, we've got the green washi tape green set. So that's this one right here, MR for mild red. So they've dropped that kind of numbering system. There's like all these have MDB, MN, I, I mean MVI, none of that exists anymore in these two newer sets. So I assume in the newer packs, if you get the 25 colors, you won't see all this ME. But if you f get your hands on an older pack like I have here with the Japanese on it, that's how you'll be able to tell the color differences is by looking for that tiny little English letters, the MR or the MMZ, MVE. That's how you'll know what color you have in your hand. The other thing they've done differently is there's like a color bar right here, color indicator. So that's really nice that they've added that. I love the look of this tool. It's white. On one end, there is a chisel tip. And then on the other end, there is a fine point tip. So this makes it great for um, both note taking and highlighting in a book, whatever you're working on. And it also was fantastic for when I was coloring and doing art with it, it made it a very versatile tool. So I've been really a big fan of this. Now, if you look at the packaging, um, it says, let's see, it has the name here that it's the Refresh Mild Set. So they have different names for these sets. I had this labeled as the Bright Set, and this one they're calling it the Refresh Set. So I ran across that even on um, Zebra's website and on Amazon's website. The little sets are different names, so that even gets confusing. So I'll probably go and add that this is some kind, sometimes called the Bright Set, sometimes called the refresh set. So it's quite confusing out there. Sometimes they're called highlighters, sometimes they're called markers. Yeah, very confusing. So some of the things that they um, um, talk about is that it's the double-ended, that it's translucent and mild color. It doesn't bleed through most surfaces, which we're going to do a test here in just a minute to see if that's true. Um, the mild liners uh, available in 25 colors in a variety of palettes. And then here they talk about their names. So this one they're calling the cool and refined warm colors, fluorescent colors, refresh, and friendly. So yeah, they're calling this the, instead of bright, they're calling it refresh. So I'm going to change that right now to what they're calling it, because I would tend to lean towards more what they're saying right here. Bright, and then we're gonna put refresh. So some other things I learned about this ink is that it's water resistant pigment. So we're gonna test that as well. And they also talk about it being really layerable and that you can blend the inks. So when I read that, the layering and blending, I got really excited as a colorist. That makes me excited. Can you really layer it? Um, because the colors in general are either light to mid-tone. You know, this one's a little bit darker, but it's still, it's quite up in the mid-tone range. There's nothing really dark here. So you guys know I like to do blends that go light, medium, and dark. And if you don't have that kind of range, how do you get a good, good contrast in your blends? And so uh, where they're fun to color with, they never really inspired me to do much coloring with them. Um, but when I started reading a little bit more about the properties of the ink and they talked about layering and that they are water resistant, it made me think, well, if they're water resistant and you can layer, then in my mind, that means if you let that first layer dry, and then come in with a second layer, it should darken up and you should be able to darken. And you might even be able to mix them and get even darker tones by using color theory. So that's what I did. I thought, okay, let's push these pens, these markers, these highlighters, whatever you want to call them, and see what you can, what I can come up with. So let me show you in this book here, this is Mandela Bliss Volume 3. Uh, this is another book that you can order um, here at Coloring Bliss. Mandela Bliss Volume 3 is a special Mandela Bliss book. I designed it specifically because I wanted a Mandela, a Mandela book that had big wide open 
um, area so that you could experiment and practice different techniques or maybe doodle and do different things in the mandala. I didn't want a lot of details, wanted lots of open spaces. So this was the perfect book for me to reach for. Also, this book I had printed on watercolor paper. That's one of the options that you have at Coloring Bliss's print shop is we have different papers you can pick from. So I thought with this layering principle, it would be a good place for me to practice um, that aspect or um, property of these markers. So here it is. Here is the mandala that I colored using only the mild liners by zebra now i did use a gel pen to get the sparkle around in these two rings i did a little bit of stippling here too with the sparkle pop pen and then i did use a little bit of white posca paint pen for a little bit of glimmer on the little stone in the middle other than that all of this out here is all mild liner which is pretty exciting to me because look at the deep dark reds I was able to get. Now again, let's go back and look at our swatches here. Now, that's pretty cool to me, deep dark blues. Again, look here, I didn't even have this row right here. This is all I had to pick from and I was able to get deep dark grays, deep dark blues. This is really exciting. So that layering and blending that they talked about, I would totally was able to make happen here on this coloring page. Let me move it in the light so you can see that sparkle pop shine. Oh, so pretty. So that was really cool to me. So I did lots of research on these mild liners because I got more and more inspired by them. So as you research into the mild liners, you start running into some other products and that's what we're going to be looking at here in a minute. But before we leave the mild liners, I wanna show you and we, I wanna do a little test because one of the properties of these pens, according to their own package, is that they don't bleed through most surfaces. So let's put that to the test because that's really important when it comes to a basic highlighter. We don't want it to bleed through if we're, we're highlighting in a book or in a Bible or something like that. So let's see if it's going to bleed through. And I don't think I ever looked on the back. Nope, no bleed through here. Um, the only place I see any bleed through may be from the gel pen. Everything else looks good. Of course, this is um, a nice thicker paper here, so I wouldn't expect it to bleed through this paper. Okay, let's though do a test. This is just your typical spiral notebook that you pick up for back to school, right? Really cheap, um, flimsy paper in this spiral notebook. So here we're going to do a bleed through and ghosting test. I've already started the test and the way we're going to perform this test, I need our new five pens, one, two, three, four and five. I can tell these are my five because of the yellow washi tape. So the way we're going to perform this is I have three columns and then we use the fine point tip to write the name to see if when you do lettering, will it bleed through. So column one is just one layer of ink. Column two is two layers of ink and column three is three layers of ink, really pushing the, the ink here. So we'll t start with marigold here. And so I'll just go like that and then do two layers of ink and then three, two, three. And then with the other end, we're gonna write the name, Marigold. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through the final four pens and get them all tested onto this paper and then we'll flip it over and see if we have any bleed through and ghosting. And I'll explain what the difference is between those two in just a second. Okay, we've got all 25 colors all laid down. So let's see. So the difference of bleed through is does it actually bleed through the paper and then ghosting is when we turn it over, can we see the colors through to the other side of the page um, and know that there was ink laid down on one side. 
that's the difference between bleed through and ghosting. Hopefully I explained that good enough. Okay, let's flip the page. Is there any bleed through or ghosting? What do you think? <laughs> Here we go. All right. So definitely on this weight of paper, lots of ghosting and a little bit of bleed through. You can see over here on this page, let me bring it up, lots of little dots where we have actual bleed through. And then on this side, tons of ghosting, lots and lots of ghosting. Even on, this is the one layer, two layers three layers, and then just some standard writing. So on thin paper, are mild liners the best thing to reach for? Probably not. <laughs> I wouldn't reach for these on thin paper. So there's your test if you were wondering about that. But look at those beautiful colors. So much fun. Okay, so now as you go searching through your um, products when you're looking for zebra mild liners, a whole bunch of other zebra type products come up and there's two that come up really quickly. These two right here. This one is the mild liner brush pens. They look so similar even in a store like Target or Walmart or um, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. If they're side by side you might get really easily confused as to whether you're looking at a standard mild liner or at the new brush pen. So we're going to look at these. These are the kind of a newer product that's the word new. So we're going to look at them. What are their differences? I haven't even unboxed this. I ended up ordering mine off Amazon because every store I went to that said they had them in stock were all sold out here locally. So they're very popular right now. Cannot wait to try them. Now the other product that came up a lot is another product by Zebra. They're called the Kyra Rich. Um, highlighters. I've had these for a while. When I purchased them I was super excited about them and they kind of left me feeling a little hmm, eh, they could have been better but let's look at them together. I will swatch them. I have a second page ready to go that we can swatch all these new products on. So we're going to start out here with these because I'm um, I already kind of know about them and I'm more excited about the other two packages that are right there. So let's get the one that I'm a little disappointed by first, get this over with. So let me fix the camera here so you can see what's going on. We'll move the standard mild liners up. So these ones are considered a water-based marker. Um, they're supposed to be waterproof as well, another thing for us to test, and they have glitter in them. So that was what I was excited about. You guys know I'm kind of a sucker for anything with a little bling in it. So I liked the Zebra Mild Liners. These would come up anytime I searched for Zebra Mild Liners, so I thought, hey, let's give them a try. But yeah, like I said, Spoiler alert, they're not as great as what I wanted them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch them and then I'll show you how they turn out. So here we go. Okay, we have one more to swatch and I thought it would be fun to do it together. I'll let you look at this pen. It is a really pretty tool, has a sparkly cap with pretty um, like filigree type texture into the plastic. Um, it says the Kira Rich on it, lots of Japanese. And then again, like the original um, mild liners that I got, if you follow and find some English letters right here, then it will have like a color indicator letter on the end of those letters right there. So this one has a P for pink. So we'll write P here and pink. And then it is a little different as far as the action. It has a, more like a paint pen, like a Posca paint pen is the way that the action works. So this nib is like a pump type action. So if the nib is dry, you can actually pump it a little bit. Um, I haven't shaken it to see if 
I don't hear a ball or anything, so I don't know if you're supposed to shake it. It doesn't say, at least in English, uh, it doesn't say to shake it. Oh, product may leak if shaken vigorously or dropped. Okay, so don't do what I just did. Um, replace cap after each use. Um, ink may be difficult to remove from... Um, the label is in the way. Let's just pull the stuff out. Okay, there, that's better. R difficult to remove from clothing. Don't ex expose to temperatures. Not good for airplanes or kids. Um... If nib becomes dry, hold marker upright and tap nib against a dry surface several times. So yeah, so as I'm um, swatching with it, let me change views so you can see. Um, the nib is actually, it comes out super juicy. See how juicy? And the nib feels loose as you push on it. So it feels like, be careful, don't push too hard or a whole bunch of ink might come out. So it feels very different than the, say the mild liners. It's just um, built very differently, this tool here. So that's what the colors look like, kind of like your standard highlighter colors that I'm used to, that I grew up with. Nothing really special, but you can see that there's something glittery trying to happen. So let's move it in the light just a little bit and see if, hmm, let's go solo this direction here and see if we can catch any glitter. Maybe a little bit, yeah. It kind of reminds me of, what are they called? The Zig, what are they called? These guys here, the Kuretake Zig Wink of Stella. That's what these sort of remind me of. Not a whole lot of bling and you have to have the light just right to see the bling. I'm trying to catch it for you so you can see it. Yeah, so, you know, first glimpse, it just looks like I've used a standard highlighter rather than, whoa, she used like a glitter highlighter. That's really cool. So I think that's why I don't reach for this pen very often. But yeah, there's a little bit of glitter going on. I'd like to color with it more though. So maybe uh, when I do my coloring project here at the end, I'll use it. So I'm gonna put it in my tray with my mild liners. Okay, so the next product that I'm excited about are these here, the mild liner brush pens, which like I said, I haven't even unboxed these or looked at them yet. So let's look at them together. Get this sticker off, we'll just cut into it here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so from what I can gather, and like I said, the website on Zebra's website, and it's really hard to learn what colors these actually come in. But what I can gather, let's see, take this all the way off. They only come in 15 colors right now, as of August 2020. Um, so the mild liner, the original set with the chisel tip comes in 25 and these come in 15 colors. So let's pull out this first one and compare it to an original mild liner. Um, that's got Japanese on it. Let me grab one of the newer bodies so we can compare here. Here we go. Okay, here's one of the newer bodies. So the brush pens are slightly longer, but just slightly longer. Um, they have this clear cap, the brush tips do, so you can see the brush tip. That's really clever, very pretty. And in the little clip part here, it has a little sort of brush insignia cut into the plastic, so that's also pretty. Zebra makes a really pretty tool. And again, it's got the color indicator here on the body. The color name is on the body, just like the new body of the mild liners do. 
And yeah, it says made in Mexico. Um, it has it says brush on this end and super fine. So let's take a peek. This is what the brush tip looks like. And we'll compare it to a Tombow brush tip because most of us are familiar with Tombow brush pens. So that will be a good thing. They look identical in length and almost identical in shape and size as well. Let me grab a more colorful Tombow. I'll just grab a red one. There we go. So you can see they almost look identical. Be interesting to see how they feel. So excited. Okay, and then on the other side is supposed to be a fine point. That's the fine point there. And again, let's compare it to a Tombow. So the Tombow is more rounded and long. This is more cone type shaped of a tip. About the same length though. So that's interesting. Okay. Let's see if it says anything else. The word brush on it. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, I'm so excited to swatch these. So let's go ahead and time lapse as I swatch down the colors. During this time lapse, I'm going to share or have Steve share with you some of the footage from our recent trip to Glacier National Park. Can't wait for you to see the beautiful things that we saw during that trip. I hope you enjoy this footage. Thanks Steve for sharing it with us. I got them all swatched in and I got to say I am hooked already and hoping that Zebra puts out more colors. The brush nib feels so much like the Tombow brush nibs. It makes sense because these are coming in from Japan and so are Tombow. So maybe they're using a similar brush nib, maybe from the same factory. I don't know, but these are delicious, juicy and beautiful. I cannot wait to play around with them more. Now, unlike the Tombows, these talk about being um, permanent, let's see, doesn't bleed through, translucent color. Do these say that they are, that they won't, um, that they're permanent? So we need to test them to see if they're the same ink as the other mild liners because the other mild liners talk about um, when you hit them with water, they're not supposed to move. Water resistant. So we've got to do some more testing because the Tombows, one of the great things about the Tombows is they act a lot like watercolor. You can activate them with water and paint with them. So that would be kind of cool to have a new brush tip marker that acts, you know, you can letter with it and color with it like a Tombow, but then it has new and different properties than the ink in the Tombow marker. So we need to test these. Yeah, really excited. But there's one more product that we need to unbox because when you start searching and researching these guys, these guys come up another zebra product. So I'm really excited about these because like I said earlier, if it has bling in it, a metallic or a sparkle, I'm a sucker for it and I've got to try it. So these are the metallic brush pens by Zebra. Originally I thought they were part of this line, but no, it's a separate entity of itself. So these are a metallic brush pen shimmering color. Let me show you the package. This is the back of the package. Perfect spring for lettering and illustration. Add some pizzazz. Um, the medium tip mimics a natural brush and allows for free flowing brush like marks while lettering. 
a vibrant metallic color works well on light and on dark papers very cool i'm excited okay seven pigment ink colors metallic ink shines on light or dark surface water-based pigment ink acid-free archival and, and odorless all these inks have been acid-free so far just so you know i think um the kyra rich are the ones i'm not positive on the acid-free thing all the others these are acid free but I'm not positive on the Kyra rich water-based pigment waterproof but it doesn't say anything about acid free I would assume so but double check if that's important to you okay so let's check these out so excited all right let's see if I need my scissors again for the tape Let's see what these are all about. Come on. Okay. In there okay so this is what it looks like feels a lot like a sharpie in fact let me grab a sharpie marker so we can kind of compare um, the body shape so it's exactly the same length as a sharpie very similar in it's the same body style the cap is what's different here um, compared to a sharpie Okay, and then that's the nib. Very teeny tiny little nib. I'll compare it to the nib on a uh, Tombow. So you can see the difference in size between the two if you're familiar with a Tombow. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else of note on the packaging. Acid-free, made in China. These ones coming in from China, not Japan. Um, and I'm trying to see if it has, oh, it says gold on it. So there are color names on it. Very cool. Okay, let's cue the montage again here and you can watch me as I swatch these beautiful colors. We've got seven to swatch. Okay, we have one more pen to swatch together here. It's this purple one, which is called purple. So I'm gonna write it down. The reason I wanted you to watch me swatch this is because it is beautiful, the way that these swatch. So you lay it down and then this sort of silver starts to float to the surface as it dries. So watch how pretty this is. Of course, the one I picked to swatch for you is having trouble getting the cap off. There. <laughs> so worried for a second there. All right, back to the blissful swatching. Okay, here we go. So watch how pretty comes out really vibrant and then bam the silver floats to the top I hope you can see that yeah you can see it oh that is very satisfying that is some swatch bliss oh that is really fun <laughs> now let's take a peek at all those colors together very um, the silver as it comes up really kind of mutes it down. When you add gray to a color, it's called a tone. So it's definitely a tone of these rich colors. So let's move it in the light and see if there's a metallic sheen. Oh, definitely. Some of them are more sheeny <laughs> than others. Like this bronze doesn't have much of a shine but silver is particularly shiny, which makes sense. 
Okay, so that's interesting. So bronze has more, um, is duller than, bronze and gold are probably the most dull out of all of them. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I have had products like this before. Um, these ones here, the Metallic Markers by Winsor & Newton. That's what these remind me of. And I've had other Metallic Markers. Uh, I think I have some by um, Casemate and Bli uh, Bic and Sharpie. They kind of remind me of this, so it's kind of in that flavor. But I like the brush nib on it. I think it's going to be fun to try some lettering with it. So the next thing I want to test with these markers before we start coloring with them is to just see how waterproof they are. So for that we need to move over to watercolor paper. That will give us the best surface for this test. So um, yeah, let me clean up a bit and we'll do some testing on watercolor paper. Okay, so here I am on some watercolor paper. I'll show you what kind here. This is by Canson. Um, the Montval watercolor paper and I've done a swatch with each of the four kinds of pens that we're working with today the mild liner the mild liner brush the Kyra rich and the metallic brush pens okay and then I've got a water brush here make sure it's working and I made sure they dried I used a heat gun on it to make sure it's dry and yep, they're all good and dry. So I would just want to test and see um, if I can reactivate it with water. If I did this with, say, a Tombow marker um, and let it dry good and then came on it with a water brush, I would be able to wake up that pigment and move it around on watercolor paper. Not, I could do it on standard cardstock too, but not super well. Um, so. I want to see now how well I can reactivate it here on watercolor paper with this type of ink. So definitely it reactivates. So it's not permanent. That's the mild liner. These are the same two colors. They're both the magenta color. Um, that was another thing I wanted to see is the mild liner and the mild liner brush magenta, the same magenta. So it looks like they are. So you have to work pretty hard. This one seems a little bit more permanent, but I was still was able to activate it. Okay, now this is the Kira Rich. Get it in this shot for you here. Move that tray out of the way, sorry. There, has better. Okay. Ooh. That one's much more permanent. Really scrubbing. And it's barely moving. So yeah, I would call that one much more permanent, the Kira Rich. So that's good to know. Now for the metallic brush pen. Doesn't take much, and that one definitely moves with some water, which is fun. So this doesn't mean it's any of these are bad. These are just properties of the pen. And as a colorist, I want to know these properties so that um, as I'm working with them, especially if I'm working with them on watercolor paper, this is an option. If I color down, I can create a wash with these pens and then come back and um, add little details in so I can get good contrast um, and create different effects. Ooh, and that's interesting. I can go into wet. And typically though, when you hit a metallic or a glitter with water, sometimes that um, will get washed away. The shine and the glitter will get washed away, which is pretty much what happened. There's still a little glitter left 
and the shine get, really got washed away, so that's good to know. So their their claim that it's pretty permanent, um, and you know, with water, you know, I had to work pretty hard to activate it, but this one definitely, this one is a pretty impressive. I scrubbed really hard. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so I'm trying to think if there's any other tests you guys would want me to run on these pens. We know that they bleed. Um, let's, we didn't check these two to see if they bleed or ghost. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so I finished swatching from here to here are all the my liner brush pens. From here to here are the, <laughs> I can never remember the names, Kira Rich um, glitter highlighters. And then down here are our metallic brush pens. So let's flip it over and see how we did. Definitely lots of bleed through. I mean, a little bleed through with the Kira Rich. Uh, let me get my face off of here so you can see it. A little bleed through right here with the Kira Rich. A couple spots up here with the mild liner brush pens. Lots of ghosting, especially over here where it's three layers thick. Surprisingly, the metallic pens probably were the best out of all of them. But yeah, once again, if you're looking for a pen that doesn't bleed or ghost, the, these aren't the ones to reach for. Yep, good test though. Okay, but one thing I ran into as I was testing the mild liner brush pens is I think, I think the, the um, what, what do they call the fine point nib? feels a little firmer than the fine point on these mild liners here. So I wanted to test that and see if they look the same. So here's a vermilion and here is, I think this is vermilion here. No, that's marigold. That looks like vermilion. Yep. So here's the two vermilion pens. And I'm curious to see if they look the same. Okay. So they look very similar. So this is a brand new pen. Let's grab, because these have been used a little bit, let's grab the newest. This is the newest here. Do I have, um, hoping I have a color that is similar in the new set. I guess it doesn't really matter. This is more about feel, right? Right. So let's just get a brand new. Let's go back to this color because it's nice and strong. This is the marigold and we'll stick with this one here because they're similar. This is red. So these are two brand new to me pens. Never really used that much. Let's go to a new sheet of paper here and test my theory that these fine nids, oh yeah, see this says super fine and this says fine. So I think, I think this is a different nib. Okay, so that's with the brush pen. Let's do the same thing here now. Definitely a different nib. Ah, interesting. Okay, and then you can write. With the chisel nib. And I will be able to also write with the brush nib. Very cool. So I have 
In the end, four different nibs. I thought I was only going to have three different nibs, but I have four. Exciting. Okay. That was cool. All right. I think I have everything figured out, all the properties of my pens, all the swatching done. I know they blend well, they layer well. Um, some of them react well to water. So I think for the last part of this video, I'm going to let you sit back and watch me create and color with these tools, only the zebra tools. Um, don't forget to stick around till the end of this little coloring montage where I'm going to tell you how to enter for a chance to win our giveaway. So don't forget to um, wait around for that. And we also have an upcoming video where I'm going to show you one more zebra product that I have picked up. I'm not going to show it to you, but it's brand new to me. I still haven't opened it. It's right behind me. So it'll be another unboxing of another Zebra product that I'm really excited about. So make sure you have hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on that upcoming video of another Zebra product that I'm excited to show you. So let's cue the montage and you can watch me try to create using all of these pens that we've been playing with today. Day. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, there it is. My analogous color scheme using the Zebra products. I used all of them. The sparkly highlighters, the mild liners, the brush mild liners, even the metallics are all there. What do you think? I think I got some pretty good um, contrast. I struggled with the lights this time. Um, so it feels like really mid-tones to dark tones is what I got out of it but I like it. I picked blue and blue-green as my main colors for the analogous color scheme in honor of my husband who I want to say happy birthday to. So yeah, comment below what do you think of it and are you going to buy the Zebra products? Let me know. Okay, you made it to the end of the video and now I'm going to tell you about our giveaway. We're giving away this beautiful set of Monarch pencils and to go with it, this case. It's such an adorable case with these cute little dogs and cats and sunglasses on it. So this 48 set of pencils we um, did an unboxing for. There's a link to that video if you want to know all about the Black Widow pencils. This is just 48 of the total 144 pencils and we're giving 
giving these away. These are the brand new Monarch pencils for this um, Black Widow set. We're giving this away and the accompanying case. So if you're collecting all 144 of the Black Widow set, you can collect them all in this case and we'll help you get started with your collection by giving you this set right here. So one lucky winner is going to get both the case and these beautiful pencils. All you need to do is follow the link in the video description and it's going to give you lots of different ways to enter. Now the trick is that this contest or giveaway ends at the end of August 2020. So August 31st, 2020 is your last day to enter. We'll be announcing the winner on September 1st, 2020. And if you're watching this video after that, don't dismay. We have lots more of these types of giveaways planned. So just make sure you've hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you don't miss out on our next giveaway. Good luck, everybody. Get your entries in as soon as possible. And I hope that you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone.